we go and take care of all these? Well, we activate team speed. To say that I'm very conflicted about this game. Some of it is very well done and other parts are not. And a couple of times it got me frustrated where it kept on changing momentum of the rules in the game. However, there are things that are brilliantly done like your avatar character. So here's going to be my opinion of Sonic Forces. Really, he has to say some obvious things. The Blue Blur is back taking on Dr. Eggman and his robot army in Sonic Forces. It's a 3D fast paced platforming game. Depending on the way you play it, it's a very easy game to get into with the pick up and play controls. The main characters are Sonic and your custom avatar, so it's getting good points from me from that, where I can have my own Sonic character. They went the GTA route with the silent protagonist, what I thought was alright. I'm going to give credit when credit's due, the customization is brilliant. You get to pick the different species and you get to pick the way that you dress them and how you want them to look as you go through the game. You unlock even more stuff so every character looks unique to another player and as you go through the campaign your avatar grows as a character as you progress what I thought was nicely done. For the story it's got great potential. I thought it was going to be like the old cartoon of Sonic Sat AM. I've got to say it's nothing like that. Well Sonic is defeated by Dr Eggman and Eggman starts to create his empire with his machine army what takes over the world in Sonic's absence while you fight in the resistance with your custom character to take back the planet from Eggman. And classic Sonic is back but not from the past Sonic, this time around he's Sonic from another dimension? Other words Sonic Mania. The graphics, I think that this is the best looking Sonic game that I've ever seen. It nails the art style of the game perfectly. What does bring this world alive with wide opening moments like this background. The level design is pretty much go from point A to point B with 3D sections and 2D ones where it seems to combine the two, where it switches back and forth between the two of them. And I'm glad to say that there are some hidden pathways to be found for me. When I started to get into the levels, they finish. I thought that they were way too short, especially when you enjoyed the level. You can easily finish these levels within about three minutes. I felt like they should have been longer to get that exploration out of it. I thought that I'll get this bit out of the way first. The only thing that I hate the most were these drawing the mission briefings. They say like a thousand words, like their lip sync is completely off and horrible yeah, during these mission briefings. I still can't believe that this is an issue in today's time. Rouge, it's about time. How's Sonic doing? He's been better. They're getting ready to banish him into space. What? You can't be serious. Eggman's Fuck yeah, now it seems like I'm watching one of Jackie Chan's old movies where I've been dubbed over. All the controls, I found them easy to get used to and the boost gameplay is back from Sonic Generations and now you've got infinite lives. Your avatar uses a weapon called a Wispin. The first one that you get to use is a flamethrower and as you go through the stages you unlock new ones what have different abilities to them. What opens up new pathways in the stages? It's what I liked about it, it leaves the option to explore. Yet once when I found the Wispin that I like to use, I never changed it to a different one. For me, my favourite one was the lightning one, it's basically the ring dash as well. So I kept on using that one with its whipping. <laughs>
I also found it fun to unlock new costumes for your character. I was always changing my character's appearance. I found it a bit too easy to lose your character from time to time when it goes 2D and your character goes really, really tiny and blends into the background. It's not on every stage, but it's something that does happen. Not everyone's got eagle eyes, Sega. Ah, I told you not to say that. What the f... Oh, the... Oh. Right, uh, when you play as modern Sonic in the 3D sections, most of the game does seem to be on autopilot. You can just hold the boost button and it completely steers itself. What can catch you out on some levels where it just cuts it off for a second. There you go, fly enough and get a cheap death. No time. It's like they could not decide on how the 3D Sonic should play. And in his 2D sections, I don't know why they had this double jump in. It only gives a tiny boost and seems really pointless. On the other hand, the bosses are enjoyable where you got to learn the pattern to defeat it. And that is what I liked about the Sonic boss battles. To find out this pattern. That dates back to the original Sonic game and that's what I liked about it. Then to my surprise, there are quick time events in this Sonic game. Jungle? I guess all the explosions riled it up. So look like we'll get past without a fight. You're so gonna regret that. Hedgehogs don't make good snacks. I ain't got anything to say here apart from why? It just boggles me. And on the other missions, your character and Sonic teams up from time to time. And there's going to be button mashing moments what activates team speed. It's triggered at certain parts of the stages when you're then to. And the music that plays will drum into your head. No matter what obstacles they put in our way, we'll blow past everything they throw at us. Double boost! What, so it's only me who got this song drummed into his head? I thought the gameplay animations are interesting for the world that it's setting. The way our Sonic moves to your avatar, however, they do feel very similar to each other. And now classic Sonic's back from another dimension. I'm never going to get used to that. It seems a bit out of place, but okay, I'll go with it. it. Now for his controls, they seem a bit stiff. And other times you've got way too much momentum and overshoot a jump. And other bits of the game, it's not enough. It seems like he's way too heavy. If you just come off from playing Sonic Mania, it seems like his levels are shoehorned in. It's where they try to do this Sonic Generations thing again. I never thought that I'd say this. I hate the classic Sonic stages in this. They're just not fun. It comes off as a fucking chore. I found the mission pop-ups boring. They really didn't keep my interest. It's just do this mundane challenge. It was putting me to sleep at times. It didn't keep my interest one bit. The good thing about these, they're short. That's the thing that I appreciated the most. These missions that they are sh way short and over within a minute. It looks like they just come up with it at the last minute. It's the most tedious thing. And it looks like they did not have much time developing this part of the game. And it comes off like that. Overall, this game is quite easy. So if you're after a challenge, this is not it. 
The most disappointing thing of this game for me is when I completed it and Long Locke Shadow the Hedgehog, where his story takes place before Eggman's took over the world. Shadow only has three levels and it's such a tease because it's not on autopilot as much as Sonic's campaign. It's just a bit harder than Sonic's levels and this was the most fun that I had playing this game. Because I actually felt like I was playing the game and it added that bit of a challenge to it. And when I found out that it was only three levels, my jaw dropped in massive disappointment. There really should have been more levels like this. Yet, don't get me wrong, it was still pretty easy. Everything sounds fine from the grinding to the enemies attacking, it's all immersive and never breaks it. I like the art style of the cutscenes as well, it's one of my favourite things about this game. They were impressive and well done, it felt like I was watching a well performed CGI movie at times and I enjoyed watching these little cutscenes. I like Sonic's voice acting and his personality in this, where he's always cracking jokes and being sarcastic at times, and it did make me laugh at certain scenes. You reek of fear. Glad to see I left an impression. That's not fear. I ran all the way over here. And you haven't left an impression. I don't know anything about you, not even your name. You may call me infinite in the brief moments that remain to you. Oh, great. See, infinite? Now we're getting to know each other. So, what's your favorite color? Do you like long, romantic walks on the beach? What's the source of your power? You can skip the first two questions if you like. The source of my power is none of your concern. Sorry, but you've just got to share the secret of your power with me. I insist. It's how you want Sonic to be, and it fits him nicely. Although when Dr. Eggman on, he steals the show every time. I applaud his voice acting, who's portraying him. They're doing a wonderful job with him, and I've got to give a message to Sega here. Don't lose this voice actor. They're fucking awesome. In just three short days, my plan will eliminate the bothersome lot of you. Wait, three days? And what plan? If I told you, it wouldn't be a surprise. You know what they say, the anticipation of the end is worse than the end itself. Maybe not in this case, though. <laughs> For the new evil character, Infinite, he's a good new villain who's a bit intimidating to your character. However, there is a weak backstory, which is a shame, where he seems interesting and well acted. You get his backstory through Shadow's campaign, and it's enough to make your face sigh when you know what it is. Oh. It's really that bad. For the soundtrack, I think there's going to be mixed impressions, although the only one that I remember is the one when you do this tag team speed. It gets right into your head, like I said before. Yeah, that's how I feel. I haven't even done anything. Go on, get hit, get hit. No. For the rest of the soundtrack, I don't really remember any of it. For how long the game is, I clocked on around about four hours. So it's very disappointing. Yet, consider that they did not charge full retail price when this was released. So I can really let it get away with that. Only a bit. So in the end, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. It's above average game, it's just not one of them bad Sonic games, and it's not a good Sonic game either. It's not something that I'm going to remember or play again. Still, I think that it's worth that one time playthrough. So have you played Sonic Forces? What did you think of it? Leave it in the comments below. Until next game, you get it, I'm fucking off. It's like the big team team. It's like the big team team. What? <laughs> it's how you want Sonic to be, and it fits Sonic nicely. Although when Eggman's on, he steals the show every time. I applaud his voice acting. Who? 
who train him. Who's portraying him? For how long the game is, I clocked on around about four hours. So it's very disappointing, yet consider that they did not charge full retail price when this was released. So I can let it go. So I can let it get away with that. A bit. <laughs>